Hey, good morning. My name is Fernie, and I'm the pastor here at Mid-City Church. I am so excited you're worshiping with us today. I know that our worship team has been working hard. I know that uh, there's been a lot that, that, that's been put into today's worship service, and, and I'm so excited that you are here. I want to welcome you. If this is your first time or you've been here a hundred times, I'm so glad that you chose to worship. I know that you could have been doing a hundred other things, but you chose to uh, sit here and, and, and worship with us. And so I'm grateful for that. Really quick, before we get started, I want to invite you to pull out your phone, and I want you to text the word HERE, H-E-R-E, to the number 225-307-0662. Again, that's the word HERE, H-E-R-E, to 225-307-0662. And when you do, you're going to get three links, and I want you to, uh, you're not going to use all of them right now, but the one I really want you to focus on is the Connect card. So, so it's, a, it's a really important um, link that I want you to, to, to click on for a couple of reasons. For starters, it helps us know who was here, and, and so we want to be able to connect with you. If this was your first time, it puts you on our mailing list, but it also gives us an opportunity to tell you a little bit more about the church and how you can get involved. Uh, and the, the third is, is just it's, if, if maybe you're, you've, had, you've updated some of your contact information, it, it allows us to stay connected with you. So I really want to invite you to fill out that connect card this morning. Uh, the other thing is there's a, a, a prayer request uh, card. If, if there's anything that I can be praying for, I want to invite you to click on that link, fill that card out, and, and I look at that list every morning, and I'm praying with you and for you. Well, I'm so excited that you chose to worship with us, and my prayer is that you may encounter God's presence today. I, I want to invite you to, to uh, fully engage in worship today. I know it can be kind of hard and kind of weird, but if, if we can do more than just sit and watch, if we can participate, I think God moves in a, in a much different way in our lives. Um, I, I'm just so excited for today. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that you encounter God today.
As we, as our worship team continues to lead us in worship, we want to enter into this offering time. And, and that third link, you would have texted earlier if you missed it. it just text the word here to 225-307-0662. Again, that's 225-307-0662. One of the links there says uh, giving. Now, I want to invite you to click on that uh, and, and consider uh, giving to Mid-City Church to, uh, this morning. So, so I want to tell you, Last week, we sent out an, an email. It was a very long email of everything happening in the church. If you missed it, then um, you should click on that Connect card because that's how you'll get emails like that. But we'll also have it on our website, so I want to encourage you to go online and, uh, and, and look through that email. It's at midcity.church, www.midcity.church. And um, <clears throat> one of the things about, uh, well, as I was writing that email, I just looked at everything happening, and I thought, wow, there's a lot that God is doing here, and it made me really excited. And, and, and so um, I want to invite you to be a part of that, be a part of what's happening, be a part of the different groups, the different ministries, the, the different ways that you can serve. I want to invite you to be a part of that. But another way that you can be involved is by helping us in our mission through giving. And so I want to invite you to click on that link and, and pray, consider giving uh, this morning. Last week, we gave a challenge, a $5 challenge about uh, considering giving five dollars, and and I want to say many of you uh, did, and, I, and I'm thankful for that. I want to thank you for that. But I want to tell you, at Mid City Church, we believe that uh, offering, giving financially, is a spiritual practice through which we can uh, learn to let go uh, of our life, let go of of that that stronghold we have in our lives, that the way we hold on tight to stuff, and, and in the letting go, we begin to trust God with more and more and more, and. And I think it's such an amazing opportunity, right, to be able to let go. And in the letting go, we can support the mission and ministry of Jesus. And so uh, I want to invite you to be a part of that. I want to make that $5 challenge again this week. I want to invite you to consider giving $5, maybe a dollar, whatever you feel comfortable. It's not about the amount of uh, money. It's about uh, being able to let go. And in letting go, seeing the ministry begin, uh, God's love and forgiveness begin to be shared all around. I want to tell you, when you give to Mid-City Church, none of that money goes to pay any salaries or overheads or buildings or, or bills, none of that. All the money you give to Mid-City Church goes to help fund the ministry of, of the church. And so I really want to um, encourage you, challenge you to consider giving tonight. With those things said, I want to invite us to go into a time of prayer as our worship team continues to lead us in worship. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks this morning. God, I pray for this offering. May it be used to spread your love, your grace, your forgiveness, not just to Mid-City, not just to Baton Rouge, but to the world. God, I pray that people may encounter your grace. Use us and use this offering. We pray this in your most precious and most glorious name. Amen. Spoke a word, you were seen. 
shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, run after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, come after me. There's no shadow. forgiven. Do you believe that? You are forgiven. Do those words change anything in your life? You are forgiven. I've got to be honest with you, there's some days in my life when I don't feel very forgiven. There's days in my life when I feel like I don't deserve forgiveness. There are things that I have done. There's regrets and mistakes. There are things about my past that when I think about them, I don't feel very forgiven. I don't feel like I deserve forgiveness. Maybe you feel the same way about something in your life. Maybe there are things you carry from your past that when you think about them, you wonder, can I truly be forgiven from that? Maybe you ask yourself that same question, am I really forgiven? See, forgiveness is interesting because I think it's something all of us wrestle with. I think all of us at one point or another wonder and wrestle with this idea of forgiveness. I was having a conversation with someone earlier this week, and they told me, I don't, I don't really wrestle with that. And I asked this question. Maybe you need to hear this question too. Is there a part of your life that you hide from everybody else? Maybe it's one thing or, or a season. Is there a part of your life that you hide from everybody else because you think that if anybody found out, anybody, if anybody found out, they might see you differently or think of you differently? That struggle is a struggle with forgiveness. I think all of us at one point or another in our lives struggle with forgiveness. So for the next five weeks, we're going to be the doing this sermon series on forgiveness. And for those who know me well, I love the book of Romans. I probably have like uh, I have three copies of individual books of the book of Romans. I, I have studies on the book of Romans. I love this book. And as I was reading through it uh, a couple weeks ago, because that's what I do, I, I kept encountering this theme of forgiveness, and, and it really spoke to my heart, and I hope that it speaks to your heart. And my prayer, my hope, is that at the end of this sermon series, we can together begin to embrace the fact that we are forgiven. 
So whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is you've been through, whatever uh, uh, things you carry from your past, I want you to know this. You are forgiven, and my hope is that as we uh, journey through this series, you will begin to fully embrace that for yourself and for your life. So today, as we get started, I want to look at Romans chapter 3, and we're going to look at two verses today, verse 23 and verse 24. So let's start with verse 23. Again, this is Romans chapter 3, verse 23. It says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sit with that verse for a second. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I don't care who you are, how perfect you think you are, how hard you try. All of us, myself included, all of us have sinned and fall short. All of us fall sin, uh, uh, fall short, and we have sinned. Now, look, I want to I want to make sure that I'm clear about something. I think the uh, the the biggest uh, lie that you could ever believe is that somehow me as a pastor struggles with that less. That somehow because I'm a pastor, I don't struggle with sin or or that I don't fall short. But I'm going to be honest with you. All of us, every single one of us, have sinned and fall short. Every single one of us have sinned and fall short. You, me, your neighbor, all of us. Now, look, if you feel guilty right now, I think we're missing the point. And I know that because I carried that guilt for a long time. You see, for, for the longest time, I looked at myself and thought, man, Fernie, you should have known better. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have thought that. You shouldn't have even gone down that way. You, you shouldn't have done that. You should have known better. And, and then I make myself feel guilty because I, I should have known better, but I didn't do better. I've carried that guilt and shame for a long time, but... but See, when we talk about forgiveness, it's not about carrying guilt or shame. If what you hear when I say these words, we all fall short and we all have sinned, if what you hear is guilt, maybe we need to look at that differently. Because I think Paul is offering us words of hope and not words that shame us. Now, I want to be clear about this too. When I, when, when I talk about everybody, uh, when, when Scripture talks about we've all sinned and we all fall short, it's not an a, a, a excuse to go do whatever we want. I think as Christians, we have a responsibility to be uh, more like Jesus every single day, to be Christ-like every single day, and, and it's, it should be our goal to try to do that but when we fall short, when we're not very Christ-like, when we find ourselves in sin, I want you to know that it's okay. You're not the only one. You're not the only one who has sinned. You're not the only one who has fallen short. You are not alone in that. But there is good news. See, verse 23 says that uh, all have sinned and fall short, but verse 24 gives us a, a very different message, a, a message of good news. It says this. I'm going to read from verse 23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus. But they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. See, no matter how many times we have sinned or fallen short, we are justified by God's grace. No matter how many times we have sinned or fallen short, we are justified by God's grace. Now, I want to stop there for a second because I think it's important that we understand this word justified. 
So if you go online and you Google the word justified or justification, you're going to find a whole bunch of different definitions, and they'll all point towards the same thing, but there's one definition that I absolutely love. It comes from John Wesley's dictionary. He had this dictionary where he uh, uh, found simple definitions for words, and when he looked at the word justification, the only thing he put next to it, the only thing he used to describe to define the word justification was forgiveness. For John Wesley, the use of justifying, justification, meant forgiveness. Now look, that is an oversimplification of the word justification. It is an oversimplification of of being justified, but I think at its core, it's, it's a very accurate description, right? To be justified means to be forgiven. It means to be made right with God. You are forgiven when we talk about you being justified and you, uh, and we talk about justification. I love Wesley's definition that he uses here. Forgiveness. See, the text begins by telling us everyone has sinned and everyone falls short. And then it says, but you have been justified. But you have been forgiven. What great news that is. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short. None of us are perfect. Despite that, all of us have been forgiven by the grace of God. Now, look, I think there's three things that we need to understand about God's grace, about God's forgiveness that's being offered to us. And all of that can be found in this one verse, in verse 24. So I want to read it again, and we're going to take it by parts. It says, they are justified by God's grace as a gift. See, the first thing I think it's important to understand is that forgiveness is a gift from God. Forgiveness is not something we have to earn or something we have to uh, somehow deserve. Forgiveness is God's gift to us. Whatever struggles you have, whatever sins you have, whatever places you have fallen short in your life, God is offering you forgiveness as a gift. When I was in high school, my dad and I had about three months when we didn't really talk to each other. In the mornings, we would ignore one another. He worked at the school that I went to, the same high school, and we never talked to each other in the hallways. Our drive to and from school was very quiet. We literally spent months trying to avoid one another. And I'll never forget on my birthday, I woke up and I thought, my dad's just going to ignore me, right? It's just another day. And I woke up and there was a birthday card there for me. See, I didn't deserve that card. I had been pretty rude to my dad, if I'm honest with you. And I don't even remember what that fight was about, but I never, I don't remember ever saying to my dad, dad, I'm sorry for whatever I did. All I know is that that morning, there was a birthday card for me. See, I think the same is true of God's grace, of God's uh, love. When God offers forgiveness to us, we don't deserve it. We haven't earned it. We haven't done enough to, to, to receive forgiveness. Yet God says, I am giving you this gift. You're forgiven. The second thing we need to understand about forgiveness is that forgiveness comes with redemption. Listen to this again, verse 24. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus. Through the redemption that is in Jesus. See, this is very important because uh, Paul was very smart. The author of the book of Romans was very smart and he would have used words intentionally. and, And when he used the word redemption... You have to remember the people who would have been listening uh, to this letter would have been Israelites. And when they listened to the word redemption, they would not, uh, it would not just be another word being used. The word redemption would have taken them back to when they were slaves in Egypt. The word redemption meant that they had been taken out of, of slavery in Egypt and had been sent to freedom in the promised land. The word redemption meant freedom from slavery. 
See, I don't know about you, but, but my sin and my past tends to hold me captive so often. I tend to look at myself so often and think, I have made too many mistakes, I have too many regrets, and, and I'm always going to be defined by them. There's a part of me, if I'm very honest with you, there's a part of me deep down inside that I always worry that my past will come back to haunt me. I'm a slave to my past. And what God says in this verse, I'm offering you forgiveness as a gift, but I'm also offering you forgiveness so that you will no longer be captive to your past, so that your past will no longer have power over you. See, forgiveness comes with redemption. Forgiveness comes with freedom from the bondage that our past holds over us. Forgiveness is meant to free us from everything we carry from our past. The third thing I want you to know about forgiveness is that forgiveness is not dependent on what you or I can do, but it's dependent on Jesus. I'm going to read this one more time. It says, they are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, you and I will never be good enough to earn God's grace. You and I will never be good enough to earn and deserve forgiveness. We we just won't. Think about how hard you try to overcome some of the things in your life. Think about how hard you have to try, all of us, how hard we have to try, and it only gets us so far. Eventually, we find ourselves sliding backwards. Eventually, we find ourselves struggling. We can push ourselves and do really well, but only for a short time. And that's why I'm thankful that forgiveness doesn't depend on what I can do. It depends on what Jesus can do. Forgiveness doesn't depend on what I can do. It depends on what Jesus can do. See, we are forgiven simply because Jesus chose to be faithful and obedient. We are forgiven simply because Jesus chose to be and do what he did. We are forgiven because of Jesus. See, I want you to hear this. You are forgiven. I want you to hear this clearly. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you carry. I don't care what your past may have looked like. You are forgiven. You are forgiven. Do you believe that? You are forgiven. Does that change anything? You are forgiven. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, I give you thanks. God, I give you thanks that you are a God who holds on and doesn't let go. So God, as we enter into this journey of of wrestling with forgiveness, of, of knowing wholeheartedly that we indeed are forgiven, God, I pray that you may overwhelm our hearts so much so that by the end of this journey, we may know with full assurance that we are forgiven children of God. God, remind us, place the assurance in our hearts that we are indeed forgiven. May we receive that free gift God, may we embrace redemption and may we be thankful for Jesus. Amen.
I just want to thank you for joining us this morning. I hope that uh, you encountered God. I hope that as we worshiped together, you felt God nudging you and God speaking to you. And, and above all, I pray that uh, as we wrestle with forgiveness, I pray that maybe uh, today there was some seeds that were planted where you can begin to offer yourself forgiveness, all of us, myself included, that we may begin to offer ourselves forgiveness that we may accept that free gift that God is offering us, that we may embrace the fact that, that forgiveness comes with uh, redemption. And, and, and more importantly, that forgiveness is based on who Jesus is and not what we can do. You are forgiven. My prayer is that you may have uh, felt that nudge today. And as you go about your week, you may continue to feel that conviction. You are forgiven. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Have a fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Go forth in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.